In this video, I'm going to share with you guys seven things no one told me about Cuba before visiting. Because I was like, man, why didn't anyone tell me about this? Why didn't anyone tell me about that? Now, I will say, before I booked my trip, I did a ton of research. So, some of these items I'm going to share with you guys, uh, I knew beforehand. But again, it came from a ton of reading and going on many forums. I also want to point out that some information that I received from people who visited Cuba previously in the past and what they told me is a little outdated some of the YouTube comments people wrote are outdated as well so again I'm just gonna share a few of these things with you and hopefully if you're planning a trip to Cuba what you learned in this video may help you the first thing no one told me is that you can actually use US dollars Previously, what you heard and what you still may hear today is don't bring USD, only bring euros or maybe Canadian dollars. Meaning if you have US currency, exchange them for euros and then exchange the euros for Cuban pesos. Now for me, I did not want to do that. I did not want to exchange twice and get hit with fees twice. And then I wasn't in my home country, so I wasn't able to just go to my bank and ask for euros. So, did some research and realized that you can use US dollars. You just can't use them in the official exchange offices, which you don't want to do, and I'll get into that in the next part. But as far as buying items on the street, like souvenirs, you can use it with tips and resorts, from what I heard. You can use it to pay taxi drivers, or even in restaurants, you can use US dollars. Sometimes the check will come back to you. It'll have two options, to pay in Cuban pesos, and also the amount in US dollars. That being said, I do believe whenever you're in a foreign country, you should use their currency. But I'm just trying to make the point that you can bring US dollars to Cuba. The second thing no one told me was about the informal or street exchange rate. For people who don't know, in Cuba, there's an official exchange rate and then there's an unofficial or informal exchange rate. For anyone who's been to Argentina, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In Argentina, if you go to the official exchange offices, you'll get a certain rate. Then, quote unquote, on the street, you're able to get double. Where in Cuba, you're able to get three to four times more. So, for example, the official rate was, and I'm going to round up, it was 25 Cuban pesos for one U.S. dollar. On the quote unquote street, it was 100 pesos for one US dollar. And when I say street, I mean basically anywhere outside of the official offices. You will not have to go far to get this rate. And most likely people will come up to you first once they figure out you're a foreigner. So just keep that in mind. This is another reason why I said you can bring US dollars because in the informal market, they, they accept it. Now, if you plan on going to the official exchange offices, then you might as well take a trip to uh, Switzerland or Sweden. Cause you're gonna be paying the same prices. A bottle of water is probably gonna cost you eight, ten bucks. A little can of juice or soda, if you drink that, it's gonna be like five, six dollars. A meal of beans and rice, probably like twelve dollars. So again, just remember there are two rates: the official rate and then the unofficial rate. These next few items, I'm gonna preface them by saying that I was putting off going to Cuba for multiple reasons. I actually had a buddy who went in the past, and he was telling me, "Sly, you need to go." It's an it's an experience. And I told him two reasons why I'm not going. One, I need consistent internet. I know some people say, hey, go to Cuba and disconnect and just put your phone down. But no, that's, that's not me. I, I need internet. And the second reason was I believe previously there were only two ways, only two types of accommodations you could reserve on the island. One was an expensive hotel, which I couldn't afford. And two was something that's called a casa particular which is basically a fancy term for saying a room in someone's home, which again, I did not want to do that either. Thankfully, it seems like things have changed and I'm going to touch on them. When it comes to booking accommodations, you do not have to stay at an expensive hotel, nor do you have to stay in someone's home. You could actually book a private place. So that can be a studio, one bedroom, what have you. When I was in Varadero in the touristy place, I had a whole like guest suite to myself. So I had the kitchen and I think it was a two bedroom, private entrance, all that good stuff. When I was in Havana, I had a private studio on the sixth floor, great views, hot water, AC, super clean. I used Airbnb, but I'm sure it's the same for other third party sites. They have filters that you can select. And all you have to do is just check the filter that says entire place, meaning the entire place to yourself. 
and Airbnb will only show those listings. And again, I'm sure it's the same for other uh, accommodation sites. Now, let's talk about the internet situation, which is a little, it's interesting. From what I understand from talking to people, there are only two, well, there are two main ways to get internet in Cuba. One, staying at a hotel, usually the more expensive route, or two, finding a public hotspot outside, which are usually at parks. You're not gonna see Wi-Fi in any of the restaurants or the cafes. That being said, some accommodations have Wi-Fi in their apartments. The same way I talked about earlier, basically when you're on, let's say Airbnb, choose the filter that says Wi-Fi. It'll show you all the listings that supposedly have Wi-Fi. I say supposedly because make sure to read the description and always read the reviews and see what they say. Another thing no one told me about Cuba before visiting is that they have SIM cards. So just the same way if you travel to, uh, if you're traveling to a foreign country or even in your home country, you're able to purchase a SIM card and it has, you know, minutes, uh, I forgot what else, talk, voice or whatever it's called. And then the plan will offer you a certain amount of data. The Cuban SIM cards are the same way. I had one and then for about $10, I was able to get like 15, 16 gigs of internet, which was perfect because then my options open when it comes to accommodations. If I already know I'm gonna purchase a SIM card that has internet, I may not need my accommodation to have it. I will say the internet was actually, it wasn't that bad. It was fast enough for me to upload videos, which is what I was doing when I was in Cuba, watch YouTube, surf the internet, etc., etc., And also, it worked outside of uh, Havana. I went to Varadero and the internet still worked. The bars went down a little bit, but for the most part, it got the job done. Next up, something else no one told me about Cuba before visiting is that at least in Havana, in the tourist area, in the central area, nothing's free. Not even information. Not even asking someone, hey, where is this place at? And them walking you there, that's not free either. That caught me off guard because I've been to other countries where I was lost and I asked for directions. And instead of pointing me there, someone would walk with me to the place and they wouldn't ask for any money. Additionally, when I arrived at the airport in Cuba, I forgot that I couldn't exchange my US dollars at the official places, because I, I just wanted to exchange a couple bucks so I can use the bus. But I wasn't able to do that. I spoke with a lady there. She went all around the airport trying to help me out. She was talking to some of the people in charge of the buses, and she was just doing a lot. Eventually, she found me a taxi, uh, a taxi driver who had enough change because I had a, a huge $100 bill. And at the end, she didn't charge me anything. So I had that mindset that it would be the same in the, the tourist area, but nope, not the same. In Havana Centro, just keep in mind that again, nothing's free. Cubans are very friendly, which throws you off guard because sometimes you don't know if someone's being friendly just cause, or if they're trying to get something out of you. Only two more to list. This next one, no one told me that I wouldn't be able to use the supermarkets, man. Now, I don't know if foreigners can't use them at all, but I do know they only accept credit card and my bank cards are all American. And from what I heard, you can't use them in Cuba. They may get blocked. So I didn't want to chance it. And because of that, oh man, it was, it was kind of rough. I'm maybe like some of you guys, I like munching on things like snacks and candies and every now and then maybe some, some chips. I wasn't able to do that because I, I couldn't go to any of the, the supermarkets. Maybe in other parts of the city, they have supermarkets where you can pay in cash. But from what I saw when I was down there, that, that wasn't the case. I tried purchasing a few snacks here and there from some small places, but oh man, they, they were bad. I'm pretty sure they were spoiled and, and old. So, so just know that you're not going to do much munching and snacking in Cuba. And whatever items, you know, cosmetic items, pharmaceuticals, bring them with you. And last but not least, I'm not going to lie, people told me about this. And that's about the Cuban, whoo, the, the ladies, if you're watching, you can go ahead and, and click off the video. I appreciate you. Let me talk to the fellas, but the, the Cuban ladies out there, very lovely. It, it reminded me of my time in Brazil, where you have all spectrums as far as complexions. Also, you have a lot of mixtures out there that creates like this exotic being. I never seen so many like hazel eyes and light like crystal eyes. Again, it just reminded me of Brazil. It was very, the people were very exotic. And one point I want to stress, you're not going to see a lot of 
plastic surgeries and, and slicing and dicings of the body, nor are you going to see a, a, lo a lot of add-ons. Maybe because they don't have it in Cuba or it's super expensive to get. I, I just didn't see a lot of that. And so it's really what you see is what you get. And I enjoyed that. But with all that being said, these are the seven things no one told me about Cuba before visiting. I want to share these with you guys because I do think there's information out there, but some of it may be outdated and just just wrong. And I'm hoping these helped you, especially if you're thinking about planning a trip here soon or maybe sometime in the future. If you are watching this video a year from now, things may have changed again. So always double check. And, and verify. So with that, I'm ending right here. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I hope that it's helped you. Hope that you liked the video and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Deuces.